Hello guys, I'm assuming you guys are here because you want to participate in an auto nav challenge and this is something that anybody can do, you don't have to be a senior member or anything. But basically we're going to be using a little uh, piece of software called Pathweaver that WPI Lib gave us up. And basically, you can go in and draw your paths there, basically how you want the robot to move. And then one of the senior members, it could be me, Grady, Abani, someone like that, who's filling out the code, will help you implement it into the code and you can get to see uh, which one of your guys' paths work and we'll see who turns out the best and we'll adjust in tune and we'll eventually combine all of our ideas so we'll do individual work first and we'll test each of them out and we'll combine our individual ideas and see whose is the best basically simple as that all right so what we're going to go ahead and do is oh, first of all we need to get the files I already published to the github branch about a few things you guys need but get it from github so first thing you're going to do is obviously press the fetch origin button because you need to make sure that GitHub gets the files and go to go to the branch menu and then you want to go look for the auto nav branch which uh, should update when you fetch the origin and if you don't see auto nav under the recent branches that's okay uh, you'll probably find it under origin slash auto nav or just search auto nav and it should show up okay all right at now, once you switch over to auto nav, we're gonna go and open a path weaver. So what you're gonna do is uh, open up your VS code. So you can see you have 2021 WPL VS code, right? And um, I'll add instructions at the end, or you can go and switch to the end of the video if you need to install the new WPI lib tools, because I believe they've updated it for 2021. Uh, this project is not compatible. I'm just going to say cancel for now because we don't really have to care about this. What we're going to go ahead and do is click on the little VS Code icon on the top right and then just search tool, okay? Because you want to use WPI lib start tool, okay? And what we're going to be using is Pathweaver, okay? And so when I press that, it'll open up. And if you're on Windows, um, WPI lib should automatically install it to the start menu. So for example, I could just search Pathweaver and it shows up here. But if you're on Mac or if you're on Windows, you can just sort of a VS Code. And you can see here, I've already imported all three of my uh, these projects, but I'll show you, show you guys how to import it. So I'm going to press Import Project and you're going to go ahead and navigate on over to where the Robot 2020 project is. So if you remember correctly, this is like the characterization folder and whatnot, Robot 2020, where the Java code is stored. But what we care about is in the root folder, Robot 2020, you'll see a new folder called AutoNav. When you open AutoNav, you'll see three separate folders inside, one for barrel, bounce, slalom, and these three represent uh, different paths that the, we have to make AutoNav for. And depending on your assignment or what you choose to do, uh, you can go and do barrel bounce a slalom for now i'm gonna go ahead and show off barrel okay and then once you open click on barrel there should be a folder here called path weaver just select it so that's like blue or something like that i think it's the same in mac and just press select folder okay once you press select folder you see that it opens up and you'll have a diagram of you'll go ahead and have a diagram of the field which is super useful because what you can do is you can start building your paths and you can directly image them onto the um you can directly image them onto this template that they've given us so you so you can see here obviously this is where your paths will go and on the right is path groups i'm going to go into full screen this on the right it's called path groups because of the nature of this we won't be needing path groups we only need paths but path groups might be something you'll be interested in uh, maybe i'll get to it but basically paths is where each individual path is assigned and basically a path is you're telling the robot to go from point a to point b and you're also including some points in the middle of how the where the robot needs to go across and you might notice this barrel path it's one straight continuous path okay so so which means we don't need to use multiple paths we only need one path so First things first is we press the plus button on the bottom right, and you'll see it's called Undamed Path. And when I click on it, it'll highlight that path. You can see an arrow. So this arrow is the start. You can see I can drag it. And this arrow is the end, right? And these blue lines uh, is basically the direction of these arrows. And these are called waypoints, okay? And first thing we might want to do is, uh, yeah, save Undamed Path. And we're also going to name this. So let's just call this... Um, Let's just do this for simple. I'm going to put your own name. So I'm called Samuel, obviously. And it's called a Samuel Barrel. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to like literally do this to drag and drop and like begin shaping out the path sort of. Okay. So like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add it like this. Um, you can I believe you can uh, double click in the, yeah, you can just click in the middle. 
to um, create a new node in between. So for example, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this around here. I'm gonna click on the middle and drag, I can add a new one, drag this out. And you can see you can really spend some time just trying to get this to match the path that we should be following. And I'm not gonna go in and finish this because I want you guys to eventually uh, try this out for yourself. Uh, you can also right click this to delete, right? So just like this. Yeah, you can see this will t you can take a little bit more judgment, you can add more nodes in between. But basically the end goal is that eventually you will have the robot finish ending up here, right? So I, I know I'm skipping a huge chunk of the path right now, but basically you start here, you follow these arrow signs, right? You swing up and it ends in the finishing position. And this will try to do in one continuous path. That's all you have to do. Once you're done, press, press save, okay? And if you wanna build the files, you can go and press build paths as well. I'm gonna quickly introduce to you the edit project button, which shows uh, some of the parameters that this project, obviously it has the project directory, it has the output directory of where to put in the generated files, the game, which is right now we're doing barrel racing path and we're using meters. And you can see here we have max velocity, max acceleration and the wheelbase. Now, max velocity and wheelbase are technically data points you can get from the design team. Wheelbase is definitely something you get from the design team. You get that from the CAD. But max velocity and max acceleration, you usually try it a little bit to see what works best for the robot. Because sometimes when you have too high of a velocity or too high of an acceleration, the robot doesn't have enough grip. Uh, to deal with the path. So that might change depending on this. You can see this has some tight turns, but Ramsey should try to slow the robot down when it goes around the curb. But again, this is something we might have to fiddle with. Now I'm gonna go in and show off. You can see here, you can actually have multiple instances of path we were running. And the main thing I'm gonna be concerned about is the bounce because our robot has a special ability to be able to reverse, okay? Even though Ramzeet, the uh, method of autonomous that we use, uh, looks like I got removed, okay, import project. Uh, even though Ramzeet, the method of autonomous that we use, technically doesn't let you reverse, um, our technology that we wrote last year uh, let us accomplish that. So we're gonna go ahead and open up bounce. And you can see here, this path is pretty special because you start here and you have to go to this waypoint and you literally do a full 180 and to turn back around. Now here's the trick, we're not gonna do a full 180. Instead of doing a full 180, like just stopping here and rotating in place, we're gonna stop and just immediately start reversing and then forward and then reverse back into the finish zone, okay? And the way you do that is literally don't change anything, okay? So the way reversing works in our system is you don't, the arrows do not correspond to the way the robot faces the arrows correspond to the direction the robot will go. So we define in the code whether or not the robot is gonna go forward or backwards. And basically all we're doing in reversing is we're just flipping the wheel speeds and negating them and then saying, okay, the front of the robot is actually the back of the robot. So basically, if you want to do reverse, and I'll just do the first part of this right now, I'm gonna press plus, I'm gonna call Samuel bounce one, cause this will require multiple paths, okay? I'm going to move my first waypoint over here and my second waypoint over here. Obviously rotate it around because that's not possible curve. You can see, okay, that seems to match it pretty nicely. Place them right here. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second path. I'm going to call this, uh, yeah, I'm save that, call this Samuel Bounce 2. And what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to create a path group called Samuel Bounce right, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and drag my path in here and then my second path in here, and you see when I'm editing something in Samuel Bounce, when I click on the Samuel Bounce specifically, obviously if I click on single path, it shows me them. If I click on this, it'll show me the entire group. So I can just move my second one, uh, and you might want to pay attention to the order, right, just put two in the back, select that again. And you can see here that I can, uh, make a second path and you can see it almost looks like as if they are chained together as you can see right come on okay this is very um loose but again so the these path groups that you see multiple paths all at once and basically you start here you move forwards and then now the arrows are going backwards which means the direction the robot will go backwards, downwards, and we say that the robot will go down backwards, 
in code, so not in Pathweaver, okay? So you go forward, and then the direction a robot will move will change in a reverse like this, okay? So this first path is move forward, right? Move forward, and then this path will be reverse, but the arrows are in the direction in the reverse, is not where the direction faces. Technically speaking, the direction of the robot is always facing this way, okay? But obviously, like I said, and repeated many times, the arrows point to where the robot will move, not where it faces. Okay, so this is this is how you do Path Weaver. Um, I hope this will be simple. If you guys have any questions, obviously feel free to ask any one of our team members. And just really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys where you can um, where you can uh, uh, let's see all oh, WPI lib, where you guys can get the new WPI lib files. So and I will. Uh, I will paste the link in the description of this video and also in the Slack message. But basically, this is the GitHub. You go over to releases, and you'll see here 2021.2.2. Scroll down until you see assets, and you want to uh, download the file that corresponds to your system. So obviously, if you're using a Mac, download the f file that's labeled macOS.dmg, and just go and open that DMG, and it'll give you instructions. And then same thing with the ISO file. So with the ISO file, you want to double-click it, um, you want to double click the ISO file and then it will like, uh, let's see, it will show up as like a different drive and like you can open it and there'll be WPI lib install files. But yeah, just update if you can. But I, and because these have the new uh, backgrounds for AutoNav. All right. So that's it for Pathweaver regarding AutoNav. Uh, hope you guys have fun.